Pepper, are we about to do your DNA test? Yeah, you don't even know what's coming for you. Hi, I'm Farah, and I have a small little dog named Gizmo. Hi, I'm Laura, and I have a five pound little rat named Pepper. And we decided to get our dog's DNA tested. Obviously, we're both obsessed with our dogs, mm -hmm. and we take them hiking together a lot, like they're friends. So obviously, <laughs> when she did it, she was like, I know Laura will want to do this too, and of course I did. Prior to the testing, I thought I knew what Pepper was. Like, she looks part Yorkie and part Maltese, so like, it wasn't too much of a mystery. And I knew what Gizmo was a little bit before the test because the family whose dogs gave birth to Gizmo said that their dogs were Shih Tzu and the father, I think, was full Chihuahua. This is the little kit. I have to swab her with this little thing. Honestly, like, every time I try and brush her teeth, she, like, freaks out, so this should be a good experience overall. We'll see how it goes. The swabbing process, for me, she had to help me and <laughs> hold Pepper down. Pepper doesn't like anything going near her mouth. You should see when I try and give her her flea medication. We're gonna try this. You ready? <laughs> no. <laughs> Pepper. Pepper. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Yeah. Good. I kind of had to like, can I see? I like this. Oh, good, good. Oh, Pepper. You're good at this. But you did it on your own. I did. We'll see if Gizmo is actually gonna let me stick it in his mouth. But then once I, I kind of had to like calm him down and then slowly like introduce the swab to like his mouth and then just sort of like insert it into his gums very very gently. And then once he got used to it, he just like let me do it. But are you glad it's over? Yeah. Thank you. Pepper didn't let us do it, but she tolerated. Yeah, it. that's a very good word. So you know. Got the sample. Now we'll see. I'm honestly a little nervous to see the health stuff for Pepper's DNA test because I'm emotionally attached to Pepper in a way that I never thought was possible and in a way that scares the shit out of me. We have both been through a lot in our lives and our dogs just have been there through a lot of the, both the good and the bad. And so obviously, we want our dogs to be healthy and happy. I'm very scared at the possibility of it telling me something that could mean less time with her. I've worried about her passing away since like the day that I met her. I think what's making me nervous about doing this test is because I've been through a few traumatic situations with Gizmo already. I figured out um, he's allergic to bees, like deathly allergic, and I've had to like rush him to the vet twice on the brink of death. And, um, oh, yeah. Hello, did you just eat? My breast smells like dog food. Pepper came into my life during a time when um, it was really dark and she's always there for me on my darkest days. She never leaves my side. Um, so to think about the possibility of her being sick or being in pain and the roles kind of being reversed, like it makes me so sad. So I'm very nervous for that. His mom is just, you know, my son and I care about him so much and we've been through a lot together. He was literally the only living thing in my apartment with me when I found out um, my dad um, had passed and was sort of my first sense of comfort that I had through that. I think I'm just worried for what will be revealed in the health portion of it, just because he's just so important to me and I don't want to lose him. He's my little bud, my little guy. I don't know, I guess we'll see what happens. So Gizmo's breed results came in from Embark and we know that this guy is 37% Chihuahua, 27% Shih Tzu, 15% Chinese Crested, 12% Pomeranian, and then 7% Pekingese. So. Pom he has Pomeranian. <laughs> he does. Yep. Wow. Did you tell him? How do you feel about that? 
I did. He just kind of looked at me. Yeah, same. Obviously I was like, didn't Pepper. know. <laughs> you just feel fine. I was surprised by the results. Like I said, I thought Pepper was like straight. First of all, I don't even know if you can be 50-50 anything. Like that's what I've learned from this. Like, it doesn't make sense. It's not how things work. I thought Pepper was straight 50-50 like Maltese Yorkie, but according to this, she's 50% Yorkshire Terrier, 29.7% Maltese, 11.9% Pekingese, and 8.4% Cocker Spaniel. Wow, their twins were both a little bit oh, Pekingese, really? yeah. Oh yeah. I was a little bit surprised as well because again, I thought it was gonna be like 50-50. But yeah, I think that the lower percents were probably what was the most surprising. So from the very beginning, I was kind of scared about the health results that I was gonna get back from Gizmo. And I had a minor freak out earlier when his health results came in because um, he's at risk for only one thing. He has one gene mutation for something called primary lens luxation. I kind of kept on reading and researching just to kind of understand what it meant. Luckily, Embark gives you access to veterinarians that you can talk to, but they also give you a lot of information on like what it is. Primary lens luxation is a disorder where the outside of the lens like comes detached, essentially. So Gizmo only has one copy of the mutation. And to my knowledge, one copy of this mutation is better than having two copies, which you're at a higher risk for developing this like, PLL. So because that's something I learned through this DNA testing, I'm trying not to freak out about it, but it's something that I can, the next time I go to the vet, let them know that these were the results and like what would our next steps be or what I can look out for and things like that. Pepper didn't have any surprise health scares, which I was actually really surprised about because like in my mind, I was convinced that it was gonna tell me that like she was dying. So I was just like super freaked out, but they test for X amount of things and she came back negative on all of the things that they look for. That doesn't mean that she's like a perfect dog and that's what I have to keep reminding, well, she is perfect. It doesn't mean <laughs> she has perfect health, which is what I have to keep reminding myself and like there are other things that can come up and obviously she still needs to go to the vet. But it, it gave me like a little bit of a sense of peace because I was like, my little baby is healthy and happy and I'm gonna be okay. So I'm sort of glad for Embark just for giving me this knowledge versus not having the knowledge and not being able to know what to look out for. I think the overall process was like super easy and chill and I would totally do it again. I'm happy with the way that it turned out, obviously because Pepper like came back negative for most things and also like now I know more about her family. If you're curious and you have disposable income and you love your dog, like do it. Yeah, if you have a breed of dog that is predisposed to some type of like hereditary illness or disease, um, it's worth doing just so you can be prepared, I guess not even just mentally, but financially too, and just give you the peace of mind because, you know, unfortunately things happen and I guess it's better if you're prepared. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I know Gizmo a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening to us talk about our obsession with our dogs. And if there's anything else you want to know, we went way more in depth in the article, which you can check out in the description of this video. Amazing. Oh, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome.